Can the affordable folding OneBot T6F handle various types of beach sand? Well, today is a beautiful day to find out. Let's go do it. This is the four wheel drive section of the beach. I want to get down here farther towards the inlet before I set up and tell you what we're going to do in this video. There are four types of sand you have to deal with when you have a fat tire bike on the beach whether it's human powered or pedal assisted. Now, I've already driven out here about two miles and it's in the type one sand, the hard pack down near the ocean. Then you have type two where it gets kind of wet, but not too mushy, a little bit higher. Then you get the mushy stuff and then you get the loose sand. And what I want to do is see if the one bot T6F a very affordable folding e-bike can deal with all those types of sand. Now the allowable air pressure on these tires is between 5 and 30 pounds. I've got it set at 16 to try and get a little bit more footprint on the sand to see if I can move through it. I may have to power down, air down a little bit more as we get into it. But right now, like I said, I'm two miles in from the parking lot and it's been easy going on the type 1 and type 2 sand. Let me show you what I mean. Over here it's type 1 and a little bit higher up the hill is type 2. As always, helmet on! I've sped this up because it's really not interesting to see the bike perform well on the type 1 sand down near the ocean and the type 2 sand a little bit higher up. You can see there was absolutely no issues with this 20 inch rim bike. No problem at all on type one and type two. Let's go find some type three mushy sand and see how it does. At 16 pounds of pressure, you could see that I was sinking into the sand quite a bit and the 350 watt motor was struggling a little bit to push me through this deep mushy sand. Well, that was a tough slog. Let me show you how deep the tracks went. I was in pedal assess level three and gear two, and I was having a hard time grinding through this. Now the solution that you saw right there at the end was when you see this type three sand show up, have some momentum as you go into it, and that helps you overcome it. Let me show you how deep the footprint was. Here's the footprint. It looks like it went down about an inch. And you can see as I raise the camera up, that this was a tough amount of type 3 sand. Looking back the other direction, this is a challenge for the 350 watt motor. I'm going to go ahead and air down the tires on this a little bit more and see if that makes a difference. The range on these tires is 5 to 30 pounds. I've got them at 10 pounds right now. Don't really want to go down any more than that because I'm afraid the tire might come off the rim. Well, let's see if that has an appreciable difference in getting through this soft mush. I noticed an immediate difference. It felt like I was floating a little bit better to get over the sand, but it would have been nice if the motor was a little more powerful. I did have to struggle a bit as I sunk into the really, really mushy stuff, but I was able to get through it, as you can see here. As you look at this or other reviews, you have to remember that this is an affordable bike at $800. Actually, that helped quite a bit. This is a, the toughest spot on this beach. You can see that there's a big lip right there and a good hill, and it's all type two, merging to type three mushy sand. Let's see if the OneBot T6F can handle that. I'll get up some momentum and I'm gonna go for it. Really tough spot right here. That's some nasty type 3 sand, but the bike did it. I was in level 3 and uh, gear number 5 or 6 as I went and took that hill. Coming up here through this real soft sand, I made the mistake of still being in 5. I needed to be down in 1 or 2. Won't make that mistake again. 
Let me show you how bad the sand is. Check out that deep footprint. I was in uh, level three, had the throttle all the way on to make sure I was getting full power and also trying to pedal. But you can see that I made it up the hill over here just fine. And that's a pretty decent lip right there. A little bit of momentum went right up and here's where I came down over here. One thing I got wrong in an earlier video was my comment on walk assist. I discovered an undocumented feature about this e-bike. They tell you not to use the throttle when you have it set for uh, pedal assist. Well, I found that in pedal assist zero, which theoretically is no power to the wheels when you pedal, if you turn the throttle, you get two miles an hour of walk assist. And that's perfect. Two miles an hour is what other bikes have when you press the minus key on your control panel and it moves you forward. And that is just enough to get through the soft sand between the parking lot and the hard pack where you're gonna ride. So, undocumented feature, but it works. That's it for the beach test of this bike. I weigh 163 as of Saturday and I was able to get through this real mushy sand. No one's going to get through the real loose sand, so I'm not even going to try that. But the bike works. So for an affordable folding bike that costs $800 or less, sometimes they have coupons that drop the price even more. This seems like a good choice. All I need to do is get a rear rack for it so I don't have to use the backpack to carry my fishing gear. Have you guys tried this bike on the beach? It works. I've proved it. Any comments? Throw them down below. Thanks. And this is why it's beautiful to be able to ride on the beach. I got the sun up there. Got a little bit of fog coming up off the ocean. Beautiful waves coming in. Boy, I tell you, this is all right. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be able to do this as effectively in my mountain bike because I'd have to worry too much about the tide. With the e-bike, I've got a longer hang time. I can stay out here longer.